Hey YouTube land, welcome to another video review by Tag Counters and now we're today we're having a look because it's Halloween, today is the 31st, at the time of this recording it's the 31st of October we're having a look at a Halloween themed dish figure which is a Universal Monsters Dracula this is uh, made by Jada Toys and they've done a, this is from their Series 1 figures, they have a Series 2 in the works but series one is Dracula. And we have a awesome box from these guys. So it's a fairly solid box with plastic tray inside. You have an image from, I'm not sure if it's a movie still, or not movie still, but um, um, artist rendition of from the movies, but it's kind of that classic Dra Dracula style look to him, which is what the figure is based on. You flip around the back of the box, there's a lot of legalese stuff, unfortunately. It takes up most of the box, but then it shows the figures also available. So, I have three out of four of these figures. I haven't got the brand new Frankenstein. I am going to pick this up at some point. But I have Frankenstein, which is named incorrectly. As people well know, this is Frankenstein's monster, not Dr. Frankenstein himself. But there's, I want to say, two versions of this guy. So there's the standard one with the green skin and the kind of black suit, which I have. And then they did a black and white version of him, which came with a kind of big a diorama set. You have Dracula, the kind of classic... Sorry, the box got a little bit wet. Um, the classic Dracula-style look. Now, as far as I know, it's not based on Bela Lugosi. They are actually releasing, as part of their Series 2 figures, a more... Bella Lugosi style Dracula because um, they I think they got the light, likeness rights from Bella Lugosi's estate so now they have uh, they're going to be redoing the vampire or the Dracula with a more Lugosi head more uh, scaled Lugosi head and then the other one is the creature from the Black Lagoon which is another favorite creature design of mine I was never a big fan of Bride of uh, Bride of Frankenstein only because I've never really watched the film I did watch the film recently enough but before that I had never really watched the film so the the character was never a big deal for me like the three of these monsters universal monsters Frankenstein Dracula and creature from Black Lagoon are kind of the classic kind of monsters I think of I know Bride of Frankenstein is also a classic universal monster but it's one that I don't really know that well then on the side of the box you have images of the other characters which is kind of cool. You have like art, more art sheet, comic book style art renditions of them. So you have, you have the Frankenstein's monster on top, Bride of Frankenstein's monster, and the Gilman from Creature from the Black Lagoon on the bottom. So there is a series two on the way. They haven't released them yet, as far as I know, at the time of this recording. I'm hoping it get, they get released soon enough. And in Series 2, uh, the figures for Series 2 so far is a Wolfman, a, the Invisible Man, and that Lugosi-style uh, Dracula. I'm not sure if there's... There should be probably a fourth figure as well. I'm not sure. Oh, I'm hoping they'll do a Boris Karloff-style mummy. But for now, there's only kind of two to three figures uh, announced. So without further ado, we'll get on to the the vampire himself um so we have accessories to go through first so he does come with two alternate hands he has a more outstretched grasping or it's supposed to be his um hypnosis hand if you've ever watched the movie he kind of does this thing with his hands where he's trying to you are under my spell kind of thing so it's supposed to represent that he comes with a grasping hand for one of his accessories, which is a candelabra, which is a kind of an ornate candelabra, which I'm assuming is pulled directly from prop one of the movies. Uh, it's not one that I'm familiar with, but you can see it's kind of a almost dragon shape. It's a weird kind of serpent style creature with the candle on top and you have the melted candle on top. It's actually quite a, a nice piece. You get an alternate head sculpt with his fangs. Ha ha ha. The fangs are out. And then you get a vampire bat. Because, of course, what, who wouldn't be Dracula if he didn't turn into a vampire bat? So if you don't want the uh, 
display the figure as Dracula himself, you can just display the figure as a vampire bat sitting on her display. So, the figure itself is really nicely done. It's quite solid plastic as well, it doesn't feel cheap or, or anything like that. He stands just around a little over six inches. Um, just, well, just around the six, a uh, hair over the six inch mark. He's actually quite a tall figure, which is quite nice. And I said, he does have the alternate head sculpt. He has a soft goods cape, which is really nice. It does flow quite nicely on him. It's held on with elastic band, but there is also, and I'm not sure if you can see it here, but there is also these two pegs on his back that they're, it's supposed to kind of sit over. I think it's supposed to hold the collar up when the, those are pegged in properly but when you're swapping the head out it tends to get loose or you can remove the cape altogether and now the only thing you're left with then is on his collar you have these two um rivets or dimples or whatever you want to call them where the cape will go but if you're looking at the figure from the front you can't really notice them that much so he has that kind of classic tuxedo vampire look and he has like a waistcoat, uh, overcoat with a waistcoat, bow tie, and a kind of family crest thing. So you can tell it was very inspired by Lugosi. Even the head is close to Lugosi, but as far as I know, it's not the actual Lugosi likeness. So it, they are, as I said, going to be releasing a more, more traditional Lugosi style. And you say you can do kind of elaborate hand gestures. He has two gesturing hands for his kind of standard hands. You can swap out the hands by just pulling them out and then putting in the appropriate hand. They are on hinges, so the one for the, they all hinge in and out. So you can have him coming down stairs, holding his candelabra or whatever way you want to display him. The bat doesn't really sit on him anywhere it's not i don't think it's, it's intentional it does have little graspy claws so you could potentially run it through his little finger here and then if you want to you can have him it's not i don't think it's intentional that it's supposed to sit on his hand but it does have a little uh uh little gap on the feet so you can have it on his fingers well, he has his little candle, so you can kind of hold all these accessories, which is kind of nice. He is quite articulated, so the arms can go out that much. You don't get too much out with the arms, but you do get a full 360 rotation. You get rotating shoulder, um, bicep, double jointed elbows, which is quite nice. You have that wrist swivel with the hinge, as previously mentioned. He has a great, good waist sculpt. He does have... <coughs> You can just get it. It does have some back and forth on it. His head is on a ball joint. So you get some good side to side, even side tilt. So you can get some menacing looks. In fact, what I'm going to do. Because it's easier to do it with the cape off. And hopefully I won't break the peg. Other than the vampire fangs. Uh, head sculpt, which is pretty cool. And just throw his cape back over him. You can see how he looks with his cape on. You have that kind of classic, kind of snarling vampire look. We'll throw in his uh, other graspy hands. Bear with me a moment while I do this. You have the <laughs> look to him. Uh, legs do splits. Now his legs don't go back too much because he has the... Um, tails from his overcoat so but they do kick forward into a seated position they are quite tight uh you have a thigh swivel dual dual jointed knees so much so that he can kick his own arse with him and he has a ball jointed leg with rocker ankles and he does have peg holes in both the feet now he doesn't come with a stand um which isn't a big deal breaker. He does stand quite nicely without the stand. So he does stand fairly, fairly good. And he is in scale with six inch line figures. So I grab a few just to throw into shot. Now I'm going to grab his box out of the way while I do this. 
So you can see him with a few different figures. So here he is with one of the Cobra Troopers. This is the Cobra Island version of the Cobra Trooper. So he does stand quite nicely with them. This is one of the... Is it that watch? I don't think it's that watch. I think it's the Loyalist Mando from Clone Wars as opposed to the one from the Mandalorian. Uh, here he is with Egon from the Mattel section 6-inch Ghostbusters line. Now, there were those guys were a little on the smaller side. They were just bang on 6 inches, I think, or just... Maybe a hair off big, the six inch line. You get this guy to stand behind him. Uh, is his feet is probably not too flat. Let's see, there we go. That's a bit better. Let's double check the scale on those guys. I think. I think the Hasbro runs are a slight bit bigger. Uh, with his hair, he is just around the six inch mark. So, like the the Dracula does stand a little taller than him. In fact, he does stand a little taller than the other figures. I think he's supposed to be a taller character in general. Um, and do I have any other six inch scale figures that I can throw in with them? Unfortunately, none are to hand. But those are the majority of the six inch figures that actually would be in scale. So if you have stuff like Marvel Legends, um, G.I. Joe Classified, Star Wars, actually, uh, yeah, I have one more figure since he's just standing here off the side. Here's the Marvel Legends, is it Tomax or Zemot? One of the two twins. So you can see he does stand quite nicely with them as well. So overall, he's a really cool figure. You should be still able to get these. They were, I got mine through Amazon UK. Um, I think they're still available for most, mostly from main retailers. But if not, you might have to go to the secondary market to get them. As I said, the only one I'm missing from wave one so far, well, technically wave one, is the Bride of Frankenstein. There is a second version of Frankenstein's monster which has the, it has like the medical bed or whatever you want to call it, you know, the bed that he's, when he's been created and he gets light, shot with lightning, he becomes alive. You know, that bed that raises up into the, uh, that has all the electrodes and stuff going through it. So reanimates him basically. You get that, it's kind of like a diorama piece with that bed and stuff, but other than that, the Dracula here is actually a really good figure, as is all the figures in this line, and they're fairly solid, they're good chunky figures or not, they don't feel light, plastic or flimsy or anything like that, and the detailing is quite nicely done on them, and as for Halloween figures, they look really good, so there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick Halloween-esque style video, and as always, please feel free to like, comment and subscribe to my channel, cheers guys.